So this is a video I'm doing at school, so there's a little bit less editing than the previous. But this is for Sum Sum, which is the third lesson in the Molly Stone book of M cubed. So the first thing that I kind of want to go over is the vocab, because I think that's probably the most confusing part of this lesson. Um, so just in case you forgot, if I'm adding 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, these two numbers here are my add-ins. And this right here is my sum. So I have two numbers, two things that I put together um, to make my sum. So 2 plus 2, these are my add-ins, 4 is my sum. Um, as you probably remember from second grade, the difference tells me that I'm going to do some subtraction. So 4 minus 2 equals 2. The difference between 4 and 2 is 2. So it's just saying difference is subtraction. Um, and sum is what I get. So if I'm going back to 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, this 4 is my sum, add in sum, add in sum. So that's kind of the basic vocab of this lesson, and that's kind of the hardest part. Once you've got that, you're in good shape. So a key idea of this is that when I add stuff together, I'm going to get the same answer no matter how I add it together. So if I have three little blocks plus two little blocks, um, no matter how I add them together, I am always going to get five. So I have three here, two here, even if I switch them around, two plus three, I'm still going to get five no matter what. So no matter how I move around my add-ins, my sum is always going to be the same. So the same thing happens when I'm doing two digit numbers. And this is where it kind of gets tricky. So I'm going to do my, let's make it fun. I'm going to do my tens in pink and my ones in blue. So I have one and two, three, four. So in this question, I have 13 plus 24. So one, three, two, four. So, to get my biggest sum, I don't want to keep my 4 and my 3, given these, given these digits. So remember, digits are um, just symbols used to represent a number. So using these digits, if I want to create my biggest sum, I want to take my 4 and my 3, and I want to move them to the tens place, because they're bigger, obviously. So I'm going to say 30, 1, plus... 42. Okay. Now I've got my biggest sum, so I can cross this off. These are just the numbers that I drew initially. 31 plus 42. I can start by adding my 1s. So 1 plus 2 is 3. 4 plus 3 is 7. So I get 73. Now think of all the ways that you can rearrange these digits to also get 73. So because I know I can move stuff around when I'm adding, I can move my 2 and my 1 around. So now I can have 32 plus 41. See, I just moved my 1s around, and I just moved my 2s around. So 32 plus 41 is still equal to 73. So you imagine, I can still move around my 10s. I'm going to erase this up here because I'm done with it. So I can now have, um, so I could move 42 to be the first number, plus 31, if you think about it this way, I've switched my tens now, and I can, um, so these are kind of the key ways that I can make 73. I think that that is all of them. So it's just a matter of moving around the tens and the ones. And this makes sense because if I look at base 10 blocks, if I have 12, plus 23, I can add my, if I add my threes and then my, if I add my three ones and my two ones, or if I switch them around, and I have my three ones plus my two ones, they're going to equal five, no matter which place they fall in the number. And you may be wondering, why in the world is this even a useful skill? I mean, it's not like we walk down the street and are like, okay, given these five digits, what's, this, what's the largest sum that you can make? Um, it's just good for building that mathematical thinking skills that we're always working on. 
So say I drew the numbers four, I mean five, eight, zero, and two. I want to use these digits to create the largest sum possible. So five and eight are my biggest numbers, so I probably want them to go in my tens place. Zero and two are my smallest numbers, so I probably want them to go in my ones place. Again, if I'm creating my biggest sum, it doesn't matter if I have 52 or 80, or 50 and 82, um, because they're all going to get added together in the end. So 50 plus 82 is equal to zero plus two is equal to two, five plus eight is equal to 13, so my answer is 132. Now I can think of all the different ways that I can add this together. So 50 plus 82 is one way. 52 plus 80 is another way. 80 plus 52 is another way. 82 plus 50 is another way. So there's four ways that I can make this biggest sum of 132. And it works the same way for the smallest sum. If I drew the same numbers and I wanted to make the smallest sum, I would probably put 0 and 2 in front. It doesn't say it has to be a two-digit number, so I can put the 0 in front. So in the same way, adding 8 plus 5 is 13, carry the 1, 2 plus 1 is 3. So my smallest sum is 33. Now I can do the same thing to get 33. I can move this 8 and 5. So it's 25 plus 8 is still equal to 33. I can um, move these around. 8 plus 25, um, 5 plus 28. So there's always this, these ways to make my smallest sum and my largest sum. Hopefully this helps, and if you have any questions, make sure you bring them into class. Happy solving!